stop the music. Bring me my shoes. Bring me a newspaper. Turn up the temperature in the kitchen. Turn up the heat. <laughs> Washroom lights off. Switch the language to Chinese. Turn down the temperature in the kitchen. Welcome to my channel, Hardware AI. And the topic of today's video is speech recognition on microcontrollers. Wait, speech recognition on microcontrollers? Sounds too good to be true. Well, it because it is, sort of. There are different types of speech recognition tasks. We can roughly divide them into three groups. First one is large vocabulary continuous speech recognition. Second one is keyword spotting. And then there is also speech to intent. Keyword spotting works well on microcontrollers. Fairly easy to train with a variety of no-code open source tools available. For example, Edge Impulse. But that cannot handle larger vocabularies well. Now for large vocabulary continuous speech recognition models, because they output essentially a text transcription. So if you would like to control a device based on the output of such model, we need to combine it with natural language understanding parser. This approach is robust and somewhat easier to implement given abundance of publicly available ASR engines, but it's not suitable for running even on SBCs, let alone microcontrollers, because usually such models are fairly large because they encompass a large vocabulary. There is a third way, direct conversion of speech to parsed intent, based on specific domain vocabulary. Let's take smart washing machine, for example. Speech to intent model upon processing utterance, a normal cycle with low spin would output parsed intent. In this case, it would be intent, wash close, slots, cycle, normal, spin, low, water default. And this is really what all that we need to control said smart washing machine with our voice. Speech to intent is well represented in research, but lacking widely available open source implementations suitable for microcontrollers. For example, there are some production ready, but not open source options, such as Speaker Voice uh, and Fluent AI. I actually encourage you to have a look at them because they do feature production ready models. Uh, production ready, free and open source, but not suitable for microcontrollers. I found speechbrain.io as an example of such package. So one of my main motivations behind uh, the work on this project was to create an open source, easily accessible package for training and deploying speech to intent models on microcontrollers and SBCs. Additionally, since it is a project in my tiny ML course series, I'd like to give you, the audience, a more in-depth view on creating project with pure TensorFlow Lite for microcontrollers. While Edge Impulse is great, and I recommend you to start with it if you're new to machine learning on embedded devices, using TensorFlow Lite for microcontrollers has its own benefits too. For example, much greater flexibility in terms of data you can use and different modal architectures. As wise man once said, talk is cheap, show me the code. For modal training, you can use either Jupyter Notebook I prepared or training scripts from GitHub repository. Jupyter Notebook 
contains very basic reference model implementation and also has the explanation for each step of the way. Here is the content of the speech to intern Micra repository and I already opened the Jupyter Notebook. Uh, we have three here. One is uh, one can help you prepare your own data set and the next one is the uh, uh, Jupyter Notebook with the model training and um, inference. And the last one uh, is for visualization, the, the neural network activations. So let's start with the first one, uh, with the training and inference one. So before you run this notebook, make sure you installed all the necessary dependencies. I recommend you use virtual environment, or for example, Conda, Miniconda or Anaconda. And then you can just install dependencies from requirements file. Um, of course, you will need to change the path to dataset CCV files and parameters of audio processing uh, in, next step, in, in the first cell if needed. So in the first cell, we actually just do all the necessary imports. That's quite a lot, but mainly it is pandas, numpy, libroza for audio processing, um, then uh, for MFCC and spectrogram calculation, we use the Gen Audio Ops module from TensorFlow. Uh, then we use uh, the following uh, the following functions and classes from TensorFlow Keras. All right, and um, here you can see this global parameters for audio processing. It is really, really important that these parameters, namely sampling rate, minimum and maximum frequency for spectrogram calculation, uh, window size and uh, number of substrate coefficients, these parameters should be the same uh, for training, inference on the computer and inference on the target device. This is really important because if there is even slight difference, uh, in some cases, if you change, for example, the window size, you'll get uh, different input, different shape of input data and the model just will not work. But if you change minimum frequency or maximum frequency, for example, it will work, but uh, the MFCC, the calculated MFCC features will not be the same as used in training and um, the results will, the accuracy will drop significantly. So for the data set, I used uh, Fluent Speech Commons data set. This data set consists of 97 speakers, some of them non-native speakers, saying 248 different phrases. Uh, these 248 utterances map to 31 unique intents that can be divided into three slots, action, object, and location. Actually, for me, I use action as an intent and object and location as slots. Um, and I also recorded uh, the much smaller test data set, uh, 160 phrases recorded with wire terminal microphone. So these samples were not used in training, but the training samples were augmented, as we'll see later in the code, with augmentations library. Since Fluent Speech Commons data set recordings all very clean and noise free. All right, so let's go back to the code. Uh, here we actually see the test samples I recorded myself. And then, okay, let me start clicking, run, run. And next cell, we can listen to one of the samples from the test data set. Bring me my socks. So this actually contains uh, some people talking in the background and uh, some static noise from the microphone. All right, so let's have a look at the MFCC calculated for this sample that we heard just now. Here is an MFCC. And uh, as I mentioned before, it uses the Gen Audio Ops module from TensorFlow. Um, here we calculate the audio spectrogram and then we convert it to male frequency scale. So this is our uh, input features for the neural network. Then we process the CCV files into ground truth labels for the model. Um, so slots include both words for objects and locations uh, and intents include only words for actions. So essentially it's not, it's what we're doing here in this cell is that we create, uh, first we create uh, the, uh, the dictionaries, the dictionaries for slots and intents. Actually here they are. 
Uh, so these, 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 these are intents and these are the slots. And then uh, we, we convert uh, the slot in intent data to vectorized form. Uh, what it means is that uh, when we have, for example, action bring, so it will correspond to number, we can check it right now. So action bring will correspond to number zero, one, two, three. It will correspond to number three and so on and so forth with every, uh, with every other word. We do this uh, right here in, in the function process data. We have the vectorized slots and vectorized intents. Um, so after we have the vectorized slots for training, validation and test, we save them and then we will use them later for training. Um, okay, so next cell actually creates the data generator. Uh, in the actual training, we limit the length of the samples to three seconds by, by zero padding shorter samples and trimming the longer samples. Additionally, since the training data includes only very clean, noise-free samples, we apply aggressive audio augmentation pipeline right here. So we have the Gaussian noise, we have background noise recorded with wire terminal, uh, clipping distortion, pitch shift, shift, gain and time stretch. Of obviously, not every one of these uh, augmentations is applied on every audio sample. Uh, the last parameter here is probability. So we apply uh, clipping distortion and background noise to the most of the samples to make it sound a bit like uh, the audio from Y terminal microphone, but still not to every sample. Um, so here's a data generator and uh, let me click on this one too. So we have the, um, the first one is the training data, input shape, and then this is the slot uh, intent output, slot output and number of batches and the same for validation data and the test data. And then finally, we uh, get to model architecture. This is really basic and it consists of 2D convolutional layers followed by batch norm and uh, except for the first and last layer, max pooling 2D layers. Then we got the global max pooling and uh, one dense layer. Uh, I hope in this architecture it will be able to, to provide a link between slot and intent outputs because actually uh, in the vocabulary these, are, these two are connected. So for example, uh, with intent bring, we most often have the words such as newspaper, socks, juice, uh, shoes. Uh, I think that's, that's about all of them for intent bring. And we do not have the words like music or lights. There is no single single training uh, data point where it says bring light or bring music. Uh, so uh, hopefully this dense layer here will help model to generalize over that as well. And we'll see that it does happen to a certain degree. Uh, next we have the slots output which is dense and another dense layer number of slots multiplied by two, then we reshape it to shape two number of slots, so in this case 217, and then apply, only after that we apply softmax to the output. And then intent output is just a dense layer with number of classes or number of intents with softmax applied. Um, then we compile the model with Adam optimizer and learning rate, and here's what we got. So notice it's, uh, it's, uh, the model has 29,000, uh, slightly over 29,000 parameters and the size of this reference model is about 40 kilobytes. Um, so, okay, let me click on this one. Okay, then we're going to start the training. Um, actually, uh, yeah, Epox 1, okay, let me start the training and then we'll wait for a while because this is virtual machine. Uh, and uh, it doesn't have the access to my computer's GPU, so it's going to take a while, but yeah, it's three minutes, so we'll just wait for a while for now. All right, so one epoch is done, and uh, we got to 35% uh, intent output accuracy and then 50 slot output accuracy. Um, so when you actually train, I recommend uh, 
somewhere between 50 and 100 epochs should be more than enough and it does contain uh, the early stopping and reduced learning rate on plateau so you should be fairly comfortable with setting it to 100 epochs if you have GPU and then uh, just leaving it to train overnight depends on your GPU um, and then we can test our model accuracy uh, in the next cell you can specify the model model name uh, for the single model uh, this is the path to the model uh, or you could specify the model directory so that will test all the models uh, in a specific directory and will show the results if the accuracy is higher than accuracy threshold so in this case yeah okay so these are our results which we saw just now because it's the same test data set and it also shows us the, re the random sample. Here's random sample 62. We have increased volume and increased volume. Okay, so that, that's, that's a very correct prediction. Um, all right, and in the next cell, we do a quick sanity check on a single audio file. Let's listen to it. Change language to Chinese. Okay, it says change language to Chinese, and uh, we got change language to heat here. Uh, so the intent is right, but slot is not correct. Um, yeah, and also we can use this, uh, the output of this cell, to compare the results of float 32 model with uh, the outputs of integer 8 quantized model. So the next cell, we actually do this uh, conversion to TF light and quantization. See, we have the, uh, the representative data set function here that uh, is necessary for full integer quantization. Okay, so the conversion was successful. And then we check the performance of integer eight model. Change language hit, so it's exactly the same as uh, float 32, at least the result. Um, and then we, we, we dump uh, the model weight into C include style file. That's a XXD comment with uh, option I. Okay, and actually if you go to checkpoints and open this checkpoint for, so it, it creates a folder with the uh, timestamp. And then you see this is the model and this is the uh, TF light model and this is dot H file with model weights. And we see the size of the model is 43, 43,952 uh, bytes. So slightly over uh, 40 kilobytes. We will need to copy that, uh, the .h file, to the uh, uh, inference code via terminal and via speech to intent 150.10. 150.10 is the input sizes of the neural network. Um, so 10 in this particular case is the number of sepsal coefficients. Let's go over the most important pieces of the code. It can be roughly divided into three parts. First one is audio acquisition. Second one is the MFCC calculation. And then it's inference on MFCC features. And I'll put the result. Before you compile the sketch, make sure you have all the necessary libraries installed and see Arduino board's definitions are at 1.82 version. That is very important for TensorFlow Lite library to compile without errors. Now, so uh, for, the, for the audio acquisition, we have a DMA rec, a CPP and DMA rec.h. Uh, basically, it's very simple. So here in uh, setup loop, in the, in the setup function, uh, we call the config DMA ADC right here. So that configures uh, direct memory access uh, controller to start sampling from uh, from ADC1 in this case. It's ADC1, which is where the analog, uh, analog microphone connected to, it's, it's, it's the pin to which uh, the microphone is connected on wire terminal. Um, so we sample uh, from ADC1, and then there is also a timer, uh, an interrupt timer configured and this interrupt timer is going to call a specific function, which is called uh, ddmac1handler. 
all in all, we have two ADC buffers of the same size. In this case, it's uh, 320 uh, data samples, single data samples of uh, integer 16. Each sample is one integer 16 number. Uh, and we have a larger audio buffer. Um, so every time one of the smaller ADC, ADC buffers uh, has filled, we copy the results to the larger audio to, to the audio buffer from where we calculate the MFC, one slice of MFCC features. Uh, and uh, so in order not to, not to stop the recording, uh, when we calculate the MFCC features, uh, we continue uh, recording the, uh, the audio samples from the microphone uh, using a direct memory access controller to another buffer. In the loop, as you see, when we press the button, uh, we actually uh, set the recording variable to Y and record ready to variable to false. And then in the while loop, uh, we, uh, if buffer is ready and we set buffer ready in uh, this audio recording call callback function. So once we have uh, finished transferring all the uh, audio samples from uh, the DMA ADC buffer to audio buffer, then we set the buffer ready to true, and then we uh, extract features from this audio buffer, um, and then uh, subtract one from recording link variable, and then set buffer ready to false. So until the next time, uh, it's uh, another buffer is filled, and then we do it again. So all in all, we do it 150 times for one three second recording. So for MFC calculation, uh, this particular implementation uh, was uh, taken from keywords, uh, keywords, uh, speech keyword recognition project um, by ARM. I did leave the, uh, uh, the license text uh, right here. So if you, uh, I encourage you to actually read more about MFCC calculation. I have more in-depth description in my article accompanying this video. You can find the link in the description. Uh, but if you're interested, you can also have a look at the specific functions here uh, that are uh, related to MFCC calculation. Actually, it's mostly uh, this one, uh, MFCC compute from the from class MFCC. Uh, so it gets uh, audio data, pointer to audio data uh, array as an input and uh, a pointer to an array containing MFCC features. Uh, calculated MFCC features. So here we normalize the data. Um, here's the zero padding. Then we use uh, the inbuilt function of CMSIS DSP, uh, which is ARM, uh, RF, RFFTT. Uh, this is uh, the real uh, fast Fourier transform on real numbers uh, on float, floating point 32 data. Um, then we convert it to power spectrum uh, and then apply MEL filter banks to convert. Uh, so here we actually calculated this, uh, the spectrogram, what we have a spectrogram, the intermediary result, and then we convert it to MEL scale here. Um, okay, and then basically we uh, take the discrete cosine transform, um, which uses matrix multiplication. Uh, and then actually in the original ARM repository, we also quantize right here, but I'm using quantization procedure uh, from TensorFlow, uh, from TensorFlow Lite for microcontrollers. So I commented out that part. So in the end, we actually get just uh, the floating, floating numbers in that MFCC out features array. So when all of that is calculated, when all 150 samples in this, in this case are ready, uh, we set the recording to zero, recording ready true, and then uh, we quantize the data. The quantization actually happens here. And then we set, uh, we, we invoke the interpreter with our model by, by feeding the quantized data to the model. And then we get the output results, which we uh, print on the screen and also pretty print them in serial monitor. I copied it and now I can open and close the Arduino ID because I just changed the file.
So your own model, your, your own trained model will have slightly different name because it's, uh, it's created in this folder. So you just uh, do Ctrl C and then copy it to the line, uh, to line 106 right here. So if you're using Y terminal, the only other thing that you need to do is to change the intents and slot lists. Uh, you can find them here in your Jupyter notebook. Remember, we created uh, the, uh, the vocabularies and uh, we also uh, created the vectorized, uh, vectorized ID to intents and ID to slots and the uh, and the opposite direction dictionaries. So you go back to that cell, you copy the content from there and you place it here. Actually, in my case, it's supposed to be absolutely the same because I wasn't, I wasn't creating, let's check juice English lines, yes. So in my case, they are absolutely the same as before because I wasn't creating them again. I, was, I wasn't recreating these uh, IDs to intents and IDs to slots. I actually just loaded them from pickle file which is uh, probably something that you're going to be doing as well. You're just going to create them once and then reuse them. So in order not to change this every time. So uh, it's compiled and well, let me connect uh, the Y terminal. It's a virtual machine, so it's going to be a little bit slower than usual. Okay, let's check. Uh, okay, it's already connected. Um, change language to Chinese. Okay, perfect. So we got the change language to Chinese here. Um, okay, so let's try another one. How about bring me my shoes? Bring shoes. Okay, that's not too bad. Um, washroom lights off. Deactivate lights in the bedroom, okay. Now how about increase temperature in the kitchen? Stop the music. Uh, it is very quiet room. That's one of the things that you should keep in mind. Uh, the devices, uh, it's uh, one arm length. I actually tested it uh, with uh, about 1.5 meters distance, it still worked pretty well as long as the environment is quiet. Um, and it does struggle a bit in the challenging environments, uh, for example, when there is a huge echo. Um, but you can try it yourself and uh, in the near future, I plan to uh, publish uh, the reference code at least for Arduino and NS33 BLE Sense, so more people can try it. While this course is based on Y terminal, since it is very suitable for exploring embedded machine learning, it is definitely possible to implement it on other devices. The easiest would be to port the code to other Cortex-M4 MCU, such as Arduino Nano 33 BLE Sense. That would only require adjusting for different microphone. Porting to other ARM MCUs should be fairly trivial too. Porting to other architectures, such as ASP32 or K210 or others, would require re-implementing MFCC calculations, since they use ARM-specific functions from CMSIS DSP. There are multiple improvements that can be made to basic neural network architecture and training loop in the project. These improvements are model pre-training, SIG-to-SIG LSTM and attention, trainable filters, and using AutoML and synthetic data. Have a look at my tiny ML talk uh, on this topic to find out more about this and to find more about these improvement techniques and uh, find the links to the papers where I found them. I encourage you to fork the code repository, try training on your own data set and perhaps try implementing more advanced architectures or model training techniques. If you do, don't hesitate to give me a shout out here in YouTube video comments or make a pull request on GitHub. Hope this video was useful for you and I'll see you next time in the last installment of TinyML course videos. Until the next time!